for watching. Thanks for, uh, thanks for everything. I hope you had a good weekend. Our weekend uh, really ended with a bang. You feel the earthquake, Guillermo? No, I did not feel it. You didn't feel it at all? No, I was asleep. Wow. <laughs> we got a nice little jolt early this morning. When we went to bed, this is interesting. When we went to bed, it was April 4th, 4-4. The earthquake happened at 4.44 a.m. exactly, and it was measured at a 4 on the Richter scale. That has to mean something, right? Could this be how the four horsemen of the apocalypse show up? <laughs> The good news is my precious moments figurines are fine, no damage. <laughs> you know, they always say you should have a plan for when the earthquake hits. It turns out my plan is to wake up, grab my phone, look at Twitter, and then put it down. That's my plan. <laughs> Earthquakes are the only thing Twitter is good for. There were no reports of significant damage, although they did have to close the Etch-a-Sketch Museum that was supposed to open today. <laughs> Everything was just ruined, but... I have to say, after 13 months of worrying about inhaling a deadly virus, it was kind of nice to worry about the Earth opening up and swallowing us whole for a change. I was back asleep within six minutes of the earthquake. I was asleep uh, until our three-year-old ran into the room at 6.20 saying, did the Easter Bunny hide more stuff? Which, no, he did not. Yesterday, as I'm sure you know from the uh, Instagram posts was Easter. It was my pastel pink shirt's time to shine. Every year it comes out and then goes right back in. <laughs> we mixed it up this year. Instead of Easter eggs, we had the kids go on the CVS website and hunt for the vaccine. That was fun. <laughs> we, did... we did have an Easter egg hunt. We hid 24 eggs in the house, and once we got 24 in the basket, we we're like, OK, kids, that's it. That's all the eggs. And the kids were like, oh, how do you know that's all the eggs? And we're like, we just know this is the kind of thing we know. <laughs> the Easter Bunny has a very weak backstory, by the way, much weaker than Santa Claus. We had to make up a lot of details on the spot about where he lives, what his motivation is. We told him he lives in Florida and he hates chickens is why he gathers the eggs. But yesterday, my wife tried to explain the meaning of Easter to our daughter, who's six. She, she wanted to know what was going on. So Molly said, well, Jesus died. And Jane goes, oh, no. <laughs> was like, this was news to her. <laughs> she said, don't worry, he rose from the dead, which is a, a lot for a child to digest. <laughs> and uh, then we gave her a handful of jelly beans, and she seemed fine. And sometimes I remember that Jesus only lived to be 33 years old. Think about that. That would be like Zac Efron rising again. 33. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of, um... <laughs> a, lot of <laughs> a lot of churches held services on Zoom again this year, these virtual services, which, I don't know, brings up an interesting theoretical and theological question. Can God hear your prayers if you're muted? I say no. I don't think he can. The White House Easter egg roll was virtual this year because of COVID and also because of the risk of the Biden's dog major ripping some toddler's arm off. <laughs> He's just playful, but the White House, they made special eggs for Easter. They're actually selling them, featuring the president's dogs, Champ and Major, who even on the egg, it looks like Major's making a mess <laughs> at the White House. <laughs> President and Mrs. Biden offered their well wishes for the holiday via Twitter. They wrote, from our family to yours, we wish you health, hope, joy, and peace. Happy Easter, everyone. President Obama, wrote this Easter, I hope we can all take some time to reflect on the blessings we enjoy and the hope we have for a brighter future from our family to yours. Have a safe and happy Easter. And even the Easter dummy himself, Donald Trump issued a magnanimous statement. He wrote, happy Easter to all, including the radical left crazies who rigged our presidential election and want to destroy our country. He still got it. He doesn't have Twitter, but he still got it. That message would have been better over a picture of Jesus like this, right? Better? <laughs> I guess we're lucky that we even had Easter this year because remember when Trump said if Biden won, there would be no holidays ever again? Under Biden, there will be no school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgiving, no Easter, no Christmas, no Fourth of July, no nothing. There will be no school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgivings. No Easter's, no Christmases. No Thanksgiving, no Easter, no Christmas. No Thanksgiving, no Christmas, no Easter. There will be no school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgiving, 
No Christmas, no Fourth of July, no Easter, no nothing. No Christmas, no Easter, no Fourth of July, and no future. <laughs> no future. I mean, no future. That's the same thing he wrote on Don Jr.'s graduation card in high school. <laughs> but Kentucky Fried Chicken Little was... He held an Easter egg hunt of his own at Mar-a-Lago yesterday. Dandy Don Jr. was there with his girlfriend Karen, I mean Kimberly, and together... <laughs> Together, they shared a sweet anecdote from the Trump family memory book. In the Trump family, the Easter egg hunt is really competitive. It's I, I remember knockout, dragout fights uh, with Ivanka, uh, <laughs> especially, uh, you know, back in the day, because I may have, uh, you know, gotten on the security camera system and figured out where they hid uh, the proverbial golden egg. Did so really? I got it. Oh, when she found out what I did, it was a... Uh, it was brutal, but uh, you'd probably expect nothing less. You had a lot of kind of <laughs> alpha personalities in there. <laughs> Even a cute family anecdote makes them sound like the reign of Caligula, doesn't it? <laughs> you know my brother Daniel? You have a brother Daniel? Not anymore. We <laughs> killed him in the, in the egg hunt. It's, so then DJ TJ tried to pitch in and give his daughter uh, an Easter leg up on the competition. Take a look at this. Chloe, 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 Chloe. Pick up your. No, 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 no. Okay, we're stealing eggs. Oh, stop the steal. Hey, let's watch it again because it's fascinating. And uh, here we go. His daughter snatches an egg from another kid's clutches. So daddy decides, I like that. I'll throw her another egg to reward her for her cunning and speed. But then there, not only does she fumble the inheritance, she drops all her other eggs, some of which get scooped up by the other kids. <laughs> it's another accident at the intersection of privilege and ineptitude. But I really think that might be the, the perfect metaphor for growing up Trump. March Madness is almost done. As we tape our show right now, number one seed Gonzaga is playing number one seed Baylor for the NCAA men's basketball title. So by the time you see this message, I may already be dead. But Gonzaga, <laughs> as you know, has been the subject of a lot of controversy because they're imaginary. There's no, there's no school named Gonzaga, but somehow they managed to bluff their way into the NCAA finals with this crazy last second buzzer beater against underdog UCLA. Zang. Again with the ball in his hands. In the paint. Floater. Short. Got it back. Ties it with three. Gonzaga has time to do something. Socks for the win. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Unbelievable. Oh. The, the clapping you hear is from USC fans, but I want you to. I want you to listen to what Jim Nance said again here. Listen. Socks for the win! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Unbelievable! <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. Un one of the most respected names in sports journalism, uh, a five-time sportscaster of the year, Jim Nance, calls Gonzaga what? Unbelievable. <laughs> because he doesn't believe they exist either. I mean, look at this. If Gonzaga is a real school, why aren't there any students in the arena to see this game? Look at this game after game, win after win in this tournament. Look at the stands. There's nobody in them. You mean to tell me there was a Final Four game and no one showed up for it? Could that be because they have no alumni? Because no one ever went there? Think about this. Here's your bottom line. If Gonzaga isn't fake, why do I keep saying it is? <laughs> this is the other sports drama that's going on. Major League Baseball has decided not to have the All-Star Game in Atlanta this summer in response to the new law they passed in Georgia that tries to discourage people of color from voting. So baseball did the right thing and pulled the game, and now the Red Hatters are mad at them, including Tanny Ramirez, who released this strongly worded statement. Baseball's already losing tremendous numbers of fans, and now they leave Atlanta with their all-star game because they're afraid of the radical left Democrats who do not want voter ID, which is desperately needed to have anything to do with our elections. Boycott baseball and all of the woke companies that are interfering with free and fair elections. Are you listening? Coke, Delta, and all? 
Now, Donald Trump calling for a boycott of Coca-Cola is beautiful. He had a Diet Coke button on his desk in the Oval Office. The man urinates aspartame, okay? And it's especially funny because with all his complaining about cancel culture, this guy has tried to cancel more culture than anybody ever. If you listen to Donald Trump, you'd have to cancel baseball, Coke, Delta Airlines, Viacom CBS, Citigroup, Cisco, UPS, Apple, Macy's, Univision, HBO, Oreo, Rolling Stone, Fox News, Starbucks, Geico, Goodyear, Amazon, AT&T, the NFL, T-Mobile, Harley-Davidson, Nike, Comcast, and Merck, which happens to make Propecia the drug Donald Trump takes to slow his balding down. What are the chances that Donald Trump actually gives up Diet Coke or his bald head medicine? None, but he wants you to. And in fact, because, because it always goes like this. This is something Stephen Miller tweeted today. I just had a terrific meeting with the president, not President Trump. Uh, Stephen Miller is not using Propecia, but Donald Trump is drinking a Diet Coke. <laughs> hidden behind the phone on his desk. <laughs> Isn't that the best? Cheer up, Republicans. You can't watch football, baseball, or basketball, or NASCAR anymore, but you can still watch Trump play golf and drink Coke. <laughs> Florida Congressman Matt Gates is the talk of the town in Washington right now. He is reported to be under investigation by the Justice Department for potentially sex trafficking of a 17-year-old girl. He, of course, claims this is a deep state conspiracy. But here's how you know it's not going well for Matt. One of his few defenders, Marjorie Taylor Greene, AKA clan mom, uh, appears to have <laughs> deleted all her photos with Matt Gates on Twitter. Let's put that up again, because what a cute couple they are. <laughs> she erased them just like 9-11. Gates wrote uh, an op-ed for the Washington Examiner today. He wrote, my personal life is and always has been conducted on my own time and my own dime. In other words, my dad never paid for my sex. I pay for all of it. But this is a weird detail about Matt Gates. Not only did he grow up in the house where they filmed the movie The Truman Show, his family appears to be so desperate for attention, they have a sign out front letting everyone who passes by know it's the house from The Truman Show and the home of Matt Gates. I bet at least one of those signs comes down very, very soon. <laughs> One of the stories that's been circulating over the weekend is that Gates used to brag to colleagues about women he slept with, and he'd go around, they say, and show people videos of naked lady friends, and he made no secret of this at all. It's 500 bucks. Will you wear the Trump mask? Ugh, I told you, that's a thousand. Okay, fine. Uh, our personal text from my dad, okay? <laughs> He's just proud of himself. He's a proud <laughs> boy. Speaking of monsters, we have a new number one movie in America. Godzilla vs. Kong was tops at the box office over the weekend. It got uh, made $30 million, which is a good sign for movies in theaters overall. And my kids are very interested in this. The other day, I had to show them the trailer because they want to know what Godzilla is, what King Kong is. And so this morning, we decided to get them on tape watching it, and here they are. You will hear them with some uh, DVD-type commentary, Jane and Billy watching the trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong. <laughs> Mom, something's happening. I'm just scared to watch it. I'm scared. <gasps> King Kong. This looks crazy. Godzilla's coming. I see his tail. <gasps> oh. Oh my God, it's Godzilla. Is Godzilla gonna eat Kong? Godzilla is coming. It's Godzilla. And they're all talking oh. about it. Godzilla, let's make a dragon! He's coming. But Godzilla! And everything is... Oh, King Kong punched him in the face. Oh, Kong threw Godzilla in the water. His tail, I saw his tail. Now he blasts his blue lightning. Blue's my favorite color. It's Spider-Man in the... Billy, Spider-Man's not in this movie, silly. Ooh, what the heck? And he's fighting. I keep reaching for greatness because I'm built from it. One. A baby, but... <laughs> Will. He's Cooper. Fall. Kong bows to no one. <gasps> I don't love Godzilla because he's bad. 
Godzilla vs. Kong in theaters. Can I make some Paw Patrol? Oh, uh, yes, we <laughs> They're on a roll, why not? Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't. <laughs>